Coming up, how podcasts work and how best to subscribe to them. Next on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Now, you're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass? Can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. Leo Laporte here. It's time for another Ask the Tech Guy. And this time, the question comes from John in Nashville via our Twit community forums. By the way, if you're not already a member, it's a great place to engage in discussion. Uh, every show is posted there. Uh, I'm always there. Many of our hosts regular, uh, regularly uh, visit. You can ask them questions. And we do get uh, a lot of discussions. In fact, that's how this one started. John posted a, a question. I stumbled upon podcastindex.org earlier today, and it piqued my interest. I was under the impression I could access all podcast shows and apps, but apparently not. From what I understand, there are multiple podcast indexes out there, which all have different content. Yes and no. So podcastindex.org is a venture from Adam Curry, the podfather, one of the early, uh, in fact, perhaps the earliest podcaster. Um, Adam uh, was instrumental in getting RSS feeds uh, to be amended by Dave Weiner, the creator of RSS, to include uh, audio files or any binary blob, but audio files or video files is what makes it a podcast. So podcasts, the definition of podcast is uh, like this, an audio show you can download, you can listen to or watch, doesn't have to be audio, I should say any show, <laughs> audio or video, here you are watching me if you're watching the video, uh, that you can download. But the key is that there is a directory, an RSS, or really simple syndication feed, that is updated whenever there's a new show. Why is that good? Well, there used to be a lot of RSS readers out there. Google Reader, the best known, but there were a great many of them. Uh, there, We've gone through the great RSS winter, but in the in 15 years ago, 16 years ago, when podcast first starting uh, started, people would... Uh, follow uh, the RSS feeds of their favorite blogs in an RSS reader. Instead of going to the website of the blog, they'd go to the reader and they'd say, it's, when there's a new blog post, they'd see it there and they would read it. So what Adam convinced Dave Weiner to do is add audio or video files to that so they could also go to their RSS reader and they'd see, oh, there's a new version of the tech guy available, new edition of it, and they could press the play button and listen. It wasn't very long before dedicated podcast applications were written, and they worked the same way as, a, as any RSS reader. Uh, you would subscribe to the podcast, usually by typing in a URL, and then from then on, whenever the podcast was updated, the podcast client would download the podcast so you could listen to it. In the early days, it was most commonly iTunes. So people would set up iTunes with a subscription. The podcast would be downloaded. And then whenever they synced up their podcast, their iPod, remember that? You had to plug it in to your computer and you'd sync it up and it would copy the podcast over to their iPod and they could then listen. We've come a long way. Nowadays, almost all podcast consumption comes over phones, but still people often use podcast clients and there are a lot of them uh, the number one is still itunes but pocket cast is also very popular perhaps you use overcast or stitcher or slacker maybe use the apple podcast app or the google podcast app these are all applications that are really just rss readers that subscribe to the rss feed of the podcast and whenever there's a new show download it so you can listen to it subscribing to a podcast really just means download it whenever there's a new one. Keep an eye on it whenever there's a new one, download it. All right. So why do we need podcast directories? Well, every podcast app has a directory. If you go to Pocket Casts or Google Podcasts, you'll see suggested podcasts. You'll see a list of podcasts. You'll see a search. All of that is a directory that is provided by the podcast client. In the case of Google, it's 
all the podcasts available in the Google Play. Uh, in the case of Apple, it's iTunes. It's all the podcasts available on iTunes. And the reason Adam started Podcast Index is because some podcasts have been blocked. Alex Jones, for instance, is blocked on iTunes. You can't find his podcast searching the iTunes directory. Um, I suspect it's the same with Google Podcasts and probably most other podcast clients. So Adam says he wants to create a, uh, a podcast index free of corporate entities, influence, and finance. Don't censor me. Well, it is true that directories are an important way that podcasts get discovered. For instance, if somebody told you, oh, Leo Laporte has a podcast called Ask the Tech Guy, you might open your podcast client and search for Ask the Tech Guy. And if it's not in that directory, you wouldn't find it. But this is an important point. Um, you, you wouldn't find it in Podcast Index either because it's not using Podcast Index. I think Adam's idea is maybe he's going to create an index that future podcast clients will use. But most podcast clients, certainly Google and Apple, the two big ones, are they? There's some editorial control. That's they do control it. They are gatekeepers, and they're not going to use Adam Curry's directory. They're just going to keep using their own directory. The good news is the iTunes directory is easy to get into if you create a podcast. One of the very first things you're going to do is go to the iTunes uh, podcast section and add your podcast. And what you're adding, by the way, is the address of the feed. The feeds usually end with XML. That's the format that RSS understands. But there are some other extensions. But that's, that's the key. Now, I have to tell you, that's not the only way to find a podcast. And so what I'm going to show you today is if you know you want a podcast, yeah, you could look in the podcast directory. But you should never be stopped just because you didn't find it. For instance, uh, you won't find Alex Jones' podcast in there for a variety of reasons, but you can always Google it. And that Google directory is a little different. It's a lot harder to get kicked out of Google. Usually it's not because of politics or fake news or misinformation. If you're kicked out of Google, it's probably because you tried to game Google's search index. That's not so nice. But in most cases, most podcasts are not doing that. So if you Google search, for instance, the Alex Jones podcast, you're going to find a number of entries. In fact, probably the next best thing was to add RSS to that. And that'll take you directly to, you see that, the RSS feed for the Alex Jones show. Now, if you see that button that says RSS and click it, this is an RSS feed. You're not going to really want to use that. That's not designed to be human readable. But you see, it really is a listing of all the shows. What you really want is this. This is the address. That's what we're going to type in. Now, to add that or any podcast that you found that way, once you find the XML file, the RSS feed, now it's an easy thing to do to launch the Apple Podcasts app. And this will work on any device. They kind of hide where you would add this, but I'm going to show you how to do it on Apple's. And you'll see it's, it's very similar. <clears throat> Uh, it's very similar on most podcast apps. Um, this is the directory, right? This is Apple's directory. And by the way, I should show you, if I search Apple's directory for Alex Jones, and you can read up on why, you won't find Alex. Oh, you'll find Joe Rogan. You'll find Surreal Talk. You'll find Louder with Crowder. You'll find other podcasts, but you won't find Alex Jones' actual Oh, well, maybe you will. I take it back. So it is in the directory. Is this an actual Alex Jones podcast? I thought he was... Yeah, that's somebody else's who's trying to ride on his name. So, uh, which is not unusual. That's another reason why these directories are not ideal. Anybody can get in these directories. So no Alex Jones podcast, but that's no problem because we already know what the feed is. If we go to the file menu for the podcast app, you'll see add a show by URL. Now, this will have some discovery features. So even if you don't have the actual XML feed, you can often just paste in a web page and it'll find it. But watch, I'm going to paste in the Alex Jones feed, press the subscribe button. Oh, and now I have it. That He is in my library now. So that's all you really need to do is paste that URL in. And again, that URL is not necessarily in every directory.
but it's almost always going to be in Google. So the trick, if you want to find a podcast and you don't see it in your directory, is to Google the podcast name and maybe RSS feed and find the actual link. We at Twit, we actually have a page dedicated to RSS feeds. It's our subscribe page. So if you go to twit.tv slash subscribe, some links. So for instance, here's Ask the Tech Guy. And you'll see links to audio and video. Now, we do link directly into Apple Podcasts. That is not an RSS feed. That's a link into their directory. Or Google Podcasts or YouTube. But you'll notice you'll also see this button that says subscribe via RSS. You're looking for that. And there it is, that familiar gobbledygook that's RSS. But there's the feed address. And that's what you want, which is feeds.twit.tv slash atg.xml. You could enter that address into any podcast client. I'll show you what it looks like on the uh, iPhone because it's a little bit different on the iPhone. You're looking for a way to enter in a URL directly. So because I've added this, by the way, on my Macintosh, you see the same podcast is there. Um, I'm going to delete that because I don't, I don't really want to get that podcast added. So I'm going to delete that from my library. But how would I add an arbitrary podcast? If I, if I do a search and I don't see it, well, I can uh, always go... To my library so click the library tab hit edit and that's where you're going to find the magic add a show by url and you can type in or paste in uh, the url for the rss feed and subscribe to it and you'll get it shall we try it https maybe because we're secure a lot of podcasts aren't um, there's i don't see a lot of reasons to be using feeds.twit Maybe I mistyped it. Dot TV slash ATG dot XML. And now I'm subscribed. And if I go and uh, look at my library, uh, it'll be in there. Ask the Tech Guy will be in there uh, along with all of my other podcasts. So you can do this manually quite easily. Um, well, but maybe not as easily as in a directory. So why do we even have podcast directories? Well, certainly every app should have a directory. And in the perfect world, every app would have a directory that includes all podcasts. But frankly, there are so many podcasts, hundreds of thousands at this point. You can't expect a Pocket Cast or Overcast to have a complete directory. It'll have a directory of popular shows, shows that uh, people who use the app use uh, or listen to on a regular basis it'll probably be in there usually that directory is sorted by the most popular based on that particular application's listenership that kind of thing but in no podcast app that i know of can you not always manually enter a show so find the show's feed its rss feed paste it in and now you're subscribed the good news is you won't have to ever do that again and if you use a podcast app like apple's or Pocket Casts or Google's that automatically syncs it to your account and makes it this, you know, subscribe once, subscribe everywhere. You won't have to ever worry about it again. It'll be on your phone, it'll be on your computer, it'll be on all your devices. I think Adam probably is, I don't know why Adam's creating this. I think his heart's in the right place. He says, you know, why shouldn't there be an index of every podcast? But understand, in order for that to work, every podcaster in the world has to add their podcast to that Adam Curry's podcast, index.org. And by the way, that's not the only one. There are dozens of these. We get solicitations all the time from people who say, add us to our, add, add you, add yourself to our podcast index, add yourself to our, po and frankly, I don't see the advantage. I want to be on iTunes. I want to be on Overcast. I want to be on Pocket Cast. We are, but I don't really care that much if I'm on a bunch of random podcast directories that nobody ever searches or looks at if you're on google oh by the way you should have a website and if you're creating a podcast make sure somewhere clearly on that website is your rss feed maybe a button or a link that says here's our rss feed so that somebody looking for you can find your website and find that feed and add it to their client so to answer your question john i i'm not sure why adam has created this i think it's probably not necessary. Adam has done something similar in the past. You may remember 
uh, pod show, which became Mevio. Um, he calls that a podcast network, but really his goal was to get every podcast in the world on that thing. Um, that failed. And uh, maybe he's trying to do it again. I don't know. Um, we'll add ourselves to podcast index. Sure. But I wouldn't say that it's a necessity for anybody. It's, it's not necessary. Does that make sense? And there's a good way to, to subscribe to podcasts so that, you know, it is a free speech thing. As long as a podcast has an RSS feed, anybody can subscribe, anybody can listen, and no one can stop you. This show brought to you by LastPass. LastPass helps you manage identities and promote good security behaviors while your employees are remote. You want your employees to have secure password storage. LastPass gives them their own vault for storing every app and web login they use. So they always have their passwords with them. Working remotely should add convenience, not frustration. Rest easy knowing your business is secure with LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's this episode of Ask the Tech Guy. I hope you had a wonderful uh, weekend and I look forward to a great week We'll spend it together on Twit uh, with all of our shows, and then uh, I'll see you back here next Monday. I'm Leo Laporte. If you've got a question, don't forget, ask the tech guy at twit.tv. Have a great week. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email ask the tech guy at twit.tv.